Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a Fenty Beauty first impression sort of review try on video. I have a ton of stuff that I purchased, literally a ton, I think about $400 or $500 worth. I went a little ham. I wanted to try everything from the line. I've been seeing pretty much all positive reviews. That's why I look a little bit crazy right now. I just have my brows on and just concealer around them. So we are gonna jump in. I'm gonna try all the products and I'm gonna tell you my first impressions and show you what it looks like. So if you wanna know my thoughts or first impressions on the new Fenty Beauty line by Rihanna, then please keep watching. First up, we have the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Primer. You get 1.08 ounces, 32 mil, which is pretty standard. Usually one ounce is a standard. Now this is said to have a soft matte finish. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pump a couple pumps out onto my hands and rub this into the skin. This is what it looks like when you first pump it out. It's like a light cream color. So it's pretty thick. Just the way it feels. I don't feel like a slip, like a silicone slip, but it's very thick and I do feel the matteness in it. It's kind of hard to explain. It feels hydrating, but also thick and almost matte. It almost feels like the Mali Beauty uh, primer that comes in the jar. So, so far I like it, but I don't know obviously until I wear my full makeup if it's gonna be a go or not. So first impression is nice, but it's not like anything crazy. I can't really tell a difference right now. So next up we have the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. Now I did pick up two different shades. I got 230 and 290. The shades seem to oxidize from what I've been seeing or dry down a deeper color. So I thought I would just kind of pump them both on my hand and possibly mix them to see kind of what shade would work for me. So this is what the bottles look like. We have 230 right here and 290. It says to shake well before use. So I'm obviously gonna do that so we can get the best look possible. Along with foundation, I did pick up her Precision Makeup Sponge. It comes in a little box like this. I've seen some reviews and a lot of people are really liking it, saying that it feels like the Beauty Blender. So it is like a Beauty Blender, but it has kind of that little sharp edge right there. Now this is definitely smaller or it feels smaller, but it's very soft. It feels very similar to the Beauty Blender. I'm gonna go ahead and wet it and then I'm going to use it to apply the foundation. So after wetting it, it definitely does get bigger, more like the Beauty Blender and it feels very soft. Kind of reminds me of the Flower Beauty brand. Um, just super, super soft, almost softer than the Beauty Blender, so I have high hopes for it. And then I think I am going to pump both shades on the back of my hand and just mix them to see kind of what custom shade I can create. I'm just going to apply this to one side of my face. Now people are saying that this dries quickly, so... And I did mix 230 and 290. Sponge is blending out pretty nicely. In terms of the sponge, I actually like it. I feel like I could use it, you know, daily. Now, just because I want to try it, I'm going to use the Morphe Y6 on the other side of my face just to see if there's a difference in terms of applying with a sponge or a brush. So you definitely get a fuller coverage with a brush. I mean, I'm definitely noticing that with less product, if you do a stippling motion, you'll get a higher coverage. This is what it looks like on the face. I think the color match is pretty good. If it deepens a little bit, I can bronze up my um, decollete. So I feel like it's great. It's very nice and matte. I feel like my pores don't look huge and I didn't use a pore smoothing primer. So I'm pretty happy with it. I can tell it's matte, but I don't feel like it's dry and I feel like it does have a smoothing effect. It blends really nicely, like I said, with the sponge or the brush, you just get a little bit more coverage with the brush. So now that we've applied the foundation, I'm just gonna go ahead and do some shape tape under my eyes and then we're gonna try the contour sticks from Rihanna. I'm gonna use her Beauty Blender or her sponge. I actually really like it. 
And I think it's $16, so $4 cheaper than the Beauty Blender. I mean, it seems to blend really nicely. Okay, so I do have her match stick. This is a matte skin stick, and I have the shade Mocha here. I'm gonna use that to contour a little bit. I typically don't cream contour, but for the sake of trying out the products, I'm gonna do that for you guys. What I've been seeing is they're a little bit dry, but these are seem to be better than the concealing ones. So let's go ahead and try to contour just a little bit. I think the key is not using too much. I see people putting big stripes, and then I think it's hard to blend out. So I'm just going to apply, oh yeah, it feels dry. Like I can feel right now that it's dry, which that makes me nervous because I don't want to like mess up or disrupt my foundation. So I'm just gonna apply the smallest amount and then we'll see where we go from there. So again, I'm gonna use her sponge. Blending out, okay, but I'm not like blown away. The forehead blended out okay, but I'm actually gonna try to use this on my cheekbones. So I don't know if I put enough on. I'm gonna warm this up. All right, let's try this. I picked up two more of the matchsticks, and this is Radic, and I got Chili Mango. Radic is a little bit more pinky, Chili Mango is more orange. I'm gonna use this as blush. This is what it looks like. So I am probably just gonna pat it on my cheeks and then use the Rihanna sponge to blend it out. I feel like I always am afraid to use cream blushes, but once you use them, it really lights up your skin. It's like a within, uh, skin within, glow within. Wow, a glow within right? Is that what I'm thinking? You're like flushed from within. You get what I'm saying. So it makes you just look like naturally flushed. So we're going to try this out on the cheeks. These are definitely a drier formula. So I'm just going off of the actual product with my sponge, just kind of working it on the sponge and then stippling on the base. It's very pretty though. Like I said, it gives you that flushed look, whatever I was like really trying to say. And I like really bright kind of baby doll uh, blush, but you do have to build it up. I can definitely feel it's very, very dry. So I do wish it was a little creamier, but I wonder if it just wears for like a long time. Okay, so that is the shade Radic on my cheeks. I feel like it's really pretty. Just like I said, just know the formula is dry. There's some tugging and it's definitely not creamy. It doesn't just glide on. It pulls at the skin a little bit. Okay, so she also does have this setting powder. This is the Abysmat Blotting Powder in the shade Universal. It comes with a little puff in it, which I probably won't use, but this is what it looks like inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set my under eyes with my typical powder just because I don't know, I'm a creature of habit and I'm afraid to put this under my eyes. I feel like I need a loose powder under my eyes, but I will use this to set the other parts of my face. So I'm gonna do that off camera and then I'll come back and we'll apply this. Now that I have my eyes done, I'm gonna go back into this powder and we are going to set some areas of the face. Now this is said to be translucent, but it does look white. So I'm just gonna apply it. There definitely is a little bit of a light cast. I'm going to use a bigger brush just to do the rest of my face. Now I don't see like a huge, you know, white area. So I think it's safe to do on your whole face. I'm not sure in terms of flashback, but in my daily life, that's not really an issue for me. So overall, I do really like this product. I feel like it did a good job. 
kind of mattifying the skin even further and it set my makeup really nicely. So, so yeah, I like the way that it feels on the skin and I think it did a good job at setting the foundation. On to the most exciting part, the highlighters. I cannot wait for this. I did get four of the five. The one just looked too dark for me. Now I know Trophy Wipe is probably gonna be too dark for me, but I'm still going to play around with it. So I'm just gonna show you each one, so show you some swatches and then decide which one I wanna put on. This is what the packaging looks like and it's really nice and sleek. It says Fenty Beauty. And then when you open it up, this is what the highlighter looks like. So in each duo, there seems to be a more subdued and then a more um, glittery one, which I actually like glitter highlighters. So the first duo is called Mean Money and Hustla Baby. So there's a lighter, more subdued, and then there is a more intense highlight. This is what they look like. Of course, I'm going for the glittery one. So this is the first duo I got. This next duo is more pinky, and it is called Girl Next Door and Chic Freak. So you have the more subdued again, and then the more glittery one. This one is gorgeous. Even the subdued one seems to be a little bit more dramatic than the other duos I had seen. So if you like a pinky peach highlight and you want a more dramatic kind of uh, duo, I would check this one out. And the last one I got that was a duo was Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal. This one is the lightest. It is kind of like an icy champagne color. And of course I had to pick up Trophy Wife, which is this bright yellow gold, super glittery, super intense. So we're gonna try some on the face and see what we can come up with. I'm first gonna go into Lightning Dust, which is the more subdued. Now I wanna go in with this because I do wanna try uh, Trophy Wife and I wanna go in with a lighter one and then we can put the deeper on top. So I'm just using a Juvia's Place brush and let's see what kind of payoff we can get. Okay, so it's definitely more natural. This would be more for someone that likes subdued. And I feel like this is a little bit light for the color foundation I have on right now, but once we put on Trophy Wife, I think it'll be okay. Okay, now I'm going into the duo, I'm gonna go into Fire Crystal, which is the more glittery one. Oh yeah, this is way more intense. Wow. These almost feel wet. Not to the skin, but when you like swatch them, they are so creamy. Like, they feel creamier than any highlight I've ever tried. They're not dry at all. So there's that, and now I'm gonna go into Trophy Wife and see if I can lightly dust. I feel like I've seen a lot of people grab a big swipe I don't wanna do that, I just want the lightest amount and you know, like this much and see if we can just kind of make this highlight look gold and not super in your face. Oh my gosh, this is intense. Woo! I mean, it's beautiful. But if you don't like glitter and you don't like intense, definitely loving the highlighters. I think you can mix two. You can mix Trophy Wipe with anything that's super light and I think it can work for a lot of skin tones. So the last thing in the collection is this Fenty Beauty Gloss in the shade Fenty Glow. Everybody's been raving about this. So what I'm gonna do is line my lips and then I'm going to apply it. I'm actually going to apply a lipstick just because that was that's what I would typically do and put the gloss over since it's not a full pigment gloss. So I am going to use this uh, pretty vulgar lipstick in the shade Prim and Proper. It's just like a neutral nude, just to give me a base. So this is what the packaging looks like, super sleek. And it has a big doe foot applicator smells like berries and everybody says this feels good so I am kind of excited to try this. Oh wow. That feels smoother than any gloss I've ever tried. And I am a gloss girl. Super shimmery, oh I love that. 
I hope she comes out with a, like a range of shades that are um, clear, but like different tones, like maybe a cool tone, a peachy tone, a nude tone, a berry tone. But that feels really good, really smooth. I don't know how else to say it. It's just there's no grittiness, no thickness, no chunkiness. It just feels really comfortable. So my overall thoughts of the collection, I'm gonna go product to product and tell you what I think is worth it and what I think is not. So starting out with the primer, I feel like it's a nice primer, but I don't think there's anything crazy revolutionary about it. I don't feel like it did anything that other primers wouldn't do. So I would probably pass on this just because there's other items in the collection that I think are way more enticing and worth your money. Talking about the foundations, absolutely a yes, yes, yes. I really think that these are stunning and I don't think that they, I don't notice like an oxidation really on my skin. Now that's not to say it's not happening, but I didn't notice anything crazy. I just mixed two. I eyeballed these and got them online and they were fine. I feel like they smooth, it almost sets itself. Now if you have dry skin, you might not enjoy this. But for me, with combo skin, this is a go. It just feels very smooth. And even without a pore primer, my pores don't look enlarged. And it just really blended really nicely. So I would definitely say this is one of the top kind of um, products or top picks for me in terms of the Fenty Beauty line. The sponge is also absolutely great. I mean, I love it. I feel like I would be using it a lot. I can see myself using it just like the Beauty Blender, so I actually might pick up a couple more. It's $16, so it's not like $10 or, you know, super, super cheap, but it is more affordable than the Beauty Blender, and I would definitely look into it if you're looking for something that is similar but not as expensive. So on to the Magic Stick. So I have the contour, and then I also have the blush. I do like them. I will say that I like them. If you have the income and you just kind of want to buy a bunch from the line. I think that you could make these work and they're very pretty if you're a cream type of person. I just wish they were a little bit more creamy, but I do think in the summertime, we're going into winter now, in the summertime when you're a little bit hotter and more oily, that these would work. And I do like the flush that it gives. A lot of times I don't really bronze enough, so I feel like this might help give me a little bit more of a natural bronze look. So I do like these, but they're not my favorite in terms of all the products that I tried. Now the Instamat Blotting Powder, I do like. I would have to see how it wears. I know a lot of reviews said it kept them matte all day, and I do like that it is universal, meaning that anyone could use it, and I didn't see a huge white cast. I mean, it did lighten a little bit, so if you do have a deep skin tone, I would say you probably just want to apply it to your T-zone areas, but I do like it. Again, I'd have to try it longer to really know if it's worth the splurge. I absolutely recommend the highlighters. You could use them as inner corner highlights. You could use them as highlighters, eyeshadow. I love a glittery highlight. I will say if you don't like glitter, if you like a more subdued highlight, these might not be for you. They are very creamy, very intense. Usually I do use a setting spray with my highlighters, but I didn't have to with this, so absolutely adore these. These are a standout product. Um, this, the sponge and the foundation are really standing out to me, and I think you definitely should check out one of them and just see you know, how you like it. I think it's stunning. I mean, everyone I've seen apply it looks beautiful, and I think they're just really worth the money. And then the last product, which is the lip gloss, I really like. I didn't know if I was going to like it because I thought... You know, I'm not really into clear lip glosses, but it does have a nice tint and it just feels so good on your lips. So it's really comfortable, unlike any other lip gloss I've really ever put on my lips, which is crazy because I've tried pretty much every lip gloss on the market. So that concludes my Fenty Beauty first impression video. Hopefully you guys got to see how these products apply. I would say standout products would be the sponge, the foundation, the highlighters, and the gloss. So those are my four favorite, but I would say if you really are on a tight budget, I would go for the foundation and a highlighter. Those are the two things that I would see myself using the most. So I'm absolutely excited about this. I hope she comes out with more things, maybe some concealer, maybe some lipstick, something like that. And I think she did great for her first launch. And I like that everything didn't sell out quickly. It was really easy to get. So A plus for me, I really, really love this line and I can't wait to see what else she releases. So let me know down below what product was most enticing to you or if you picked anything up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.